Hi again. In our last part, I have shown you how to build the Golang Docker image. In this part, we're gonna do the same thing with Node.js, right? So, Node.js, uh, we have a Docker file here. We're just gonna do the same approach again. We're gonna say from Node.js and, oh my God, auto-completion, nice. Um, I actually just want Node.js and I don't know, um, version 10 maybe. And then we would have to copy something. So maybe uh, a package actually work there app. Well, I'm just gonna look it up, right? That's what Google is for. So um, maybe they have a Node.js image here, right? Build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. So actually let's go it's, uh, let's go through it step by step. So they're importing Node, so they're using Node 12. Okay, that's fine, let's use Node 12. Um, then they're setting the environment to production. This is a common thing to do. It's not necessary to do it always, but obviously if you want production images, that's fine. So the work the app we already have. Um, copying the package JSON and package log JSON is, is all right, yeah. Then we're just gonna install, in, in this case, we're gonna install production dependencies, that's also fine. And then we're gonna copy the rest of the code and run our node server JS. Um, all right, at the same time, what we need to do is we need to go into our node.js directory. We're gonna say npm init and I think it doesn't need a dot, right? Um, our package name is gonna be hello server, uh, whatever version. Our entry point is gonna be server chess. We don't need to test, it's not in Git. I don't, I don't know, it's gonna be MIT, I guess. And there we go, now we have a package JSON. And we're gonna want minus minus def. Um, we want an express server, hello world, right? Because with express, this is super, super easy to do. I'm not even sure what they're gonna recommend to us, but I hope it's gonna be express. No, it's not express, okay. Um, express, hello world. Don't know why people use something else than express. This is so much easier. Uh, do, 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 do. So package JSON, we have our first dependency express. Actually, yeah, I think that's fine. It's a dev dependency. No, it's not a dev dependency. It's a normal dependency. I don't know why I wrote dev here, um, but it's fine. It's under dependencies and we're gonna need a server.js, server.js and we're gonna copy the code in. It should print hello world. So it's a little bit different than our last example, but it's fine. And we're just gonna say node server.js locally. It says it's listening on port 3000. So let's switch to port 3000 here. And we got a hello world. So the project is working and it's running. Um, let's look at our Docker file. This should also work. So docker build minus T, um, hello node, I guess and we're building locally. So it's downloading my dependencies and after it has downloaded it, it will install dependencies from package.json and then it will copy the source code and it will define the command to execute. But as you can already see, it is downloading a lot of things. So we're talking probably in the range of 500 megabytes already here. Um, that's gonna be a huge image and you're gonna wonder why. Because Node or Node.js is not just like a system where you run a binary, it's a system where you interpret JavaScript code and naturally it's gonna be a little bit bigger. And if I say Docker images grab hello node, yeah, 922 megabytes. Whew. So let's run um, and let's actually forward port 3000 already. Let's run hello node. And yep, it's working. Nice. Killing it. Uh -huh. It looks like control C does not do it. 
Nice. Um, then let's do this the other way around, right? So how do you kill a Docker process that's running? You use Docker PS and you say sudo docker, I think kill, and you need the container ID. For whatever reason, this is like not working, I don't know. So there we go, it is killed. So 700 megabytes, no, 900 megabytes, whatever it is, 922, this is not good in production. So what we actually want is we want the node.js multi-stage image and we're gonna use Google again. And I don't know, codefresh.io seems reasonable enough to me. Let's see what they have to say. So, um, Docker multi-stage. It seems they are having a separate step for dependencies, um, where they install dependencies and then they're copying it over to production node modules and then they're installing them and then we are using the base image up here which is fine um, i can see there might be a slight benefit here but i'm not 100 percent sure so in my opinion this is not a good example i'm gonna look for another example and if this one isn't good either, then I'll leave it as it is because I guess you don't have to use multi-stage images if you don't want to. So I'm not 100% certain this will actually do anything. Um, I don't think there is a good example, but one thing you can do to save some spaces, you can probably check if there is an Alpine based base image and it actually already auto completed this for me. So we're gonna docker build, where is it? Docker build hello node slim. It's not gonna be super slim, unfortunately, uh, but it's gonna be slim enough for our use case, I guess. As you can see, it's downloading a new image now again, but this seems to be much smaller. Um, let's double check Docker images and there we go. Yeah, 93 megabytes, that's fine. Let's do it. Um, let's actually run it, verify that this still works. It's always a good thing because you never know if you screwed up. Um, so there we go, it's running and double check. Yeah, hello world still running, nice, okay. So that was the Node.js example. Unfortunately, I did not find a good multi-stage build example, but that's in the nature of Node.js. So obviously what you can do is you can still insert a, a second step here, right? You can say, this is our builder and then you have the same as our base, uh, as, our, as our run image or as our final image, you can have it here, uh, but there is almost no benefit to it. Um, I'm guessing we might save like two, three megabytes here by, scrapping away some dependencies and by maybe bundling your application. So if you're using Angular or whatever, uh, or React, you might save something by bundling your application and just saving the dist files in the end. That would be a viable approach. Um, but for our little server here, this is more than enough. Okay, so this is it for Node. We finished Go, we finished Node. Python is still to go and we will do this in the next video. So stay tuned, like and subscribe to the video and see you next time.